Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. I am here today doing an interview that I have been trying to get on the books since the very first interview that I did. (laughs) So this is my very, very, very dear friend, my best friend, Michelle. And she has a ridiculous number of kids. So getting our schedules to align has been crazy. So I'm really excited about this interview. I'm going to get to ask you a lot of questions. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. Let's talk. Let's talk about your background, first of all. So I'm going to introduce your background the way that I would introduce your background. This and is going to be can, fun. And this then you good. can actually tell everybody what you really did. Oh, no. This is going to be fun. Go ahead. <laughs> so Michelle used to be in IT for the largest mortgage company in the country back in D.C. And she ran basically all of their... How would you say that? I think her husband, systems. Her, her husband <laughs> describes it the best. He says she is an IT ninja. So, um, and I've gotten the blessing of being able to pull on your skill set for years and years, but you did that for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you were really good at it. Yeah. It's kind of funny how things fall into place, um, especially as we get older and you look back at how life has changed. But yeah, it was never something I had thought I'd do. I kind of just fell into it. And, you know, I was working for actually an educational publishing company. And the head of the company was a woman who loved us to do our own things and said, you know, why don't you design your own database so you can serve your customers better? And I worked with all of our top clients in the U.S. And I said, sure, I'm up for a challenge and basically learned how to code databases. And it just kind of grew from there. But yeah, what Mike always says is that I have the best of both worlds. I understand the technical, but I can break it down and explain it and teach it, which is actually something I really, really love. I love just explaining and teaching and coaching. And that was something that we did. And so to be able to see something from point A to point Z and be able to create something, it just it was something I really enjoyed. It was just a puzzle. But again, just kind of fell into it. So yeah, it's not what you went to school for. No, I was, (laughs) no, (laughs) I was actually going to teach, um, but my husband was going to medical school and so I needed something to pay the bills. And so that's actually kind of interesting, right? When you back into what do I need to support my family? I needed, I needed a six figure income. (laughs) And um, so we looked at all the different things I could do and that was never part of it. But when I was moving back east, one of my, actually, it was really fun. It was my mentor and the owner of our company, Adore Her. Such great lessons from mentors when you're young. Mm-hmm. Just made me believe I could do anything and gave me the opportunity to do whatever I wanted to. And that's when I started coding and creating and really had the flexibility to wear so many hats in all that I did. And so when I moved back east and her daughter, actually, it's kind of funny, but um, was talking about my skill set. And so they brought me in and that's how I completely changed paths, which is so funny. I feel like as a woman, we have these ideas of what our careers are supposed to look like. And then it takes something to just push you off the road, if you will. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was moving cross country. Um, I've seen it happen multiple times in my career where something happens. It's, you know, something that it wasn't planned, um, some good, some bad, (laughs) And you take those opportunities to think about, okay, well, what do I need to accomplish? What do I need to do? And that's actually how I landed in IT. It's also how I transitioned into other, you know, careers. Some worked, some didn't. (laughs) But that's, you know, that's life. But I think it's also, um, I think it's a good lesson. I mean, you know the demographic of our podcast Mm -hmm. listeners. I think it's a really good lesson for younger women to hear that, you, you had a certain goal in mind, which was obviously to put Mike through med school. Mm-hmm. And you had to shift a little bit in order to yeah. accomplish that. And it ended up turning out to be a huge blessing for you. It really yeah. gave you a skill set that you probably would not have developed otherwise. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you're, you were a powerhouse in that. But then you changed again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. a little bit later, too, in life. Yeah. Again... 
I think that, especially for the people that are listening to this, you know, we're all in different stages of our lives and we're all, I think we have these ideas of what we want to become when we grow older and we go to school for so long and we, we, you know, plan out our lives. (laughs) You know, I feel like we have this sense of control. And I think that sometimes, especially for me in my life, not just professionally, but personally, when I've had things just completely knock me off the road, I've had to decide, okay, what am I going to do? Like, I'm responsible. I have to move forward. What am I going to make this look like? I mean, it, it's, I, I make the analogy all the time. It's like, if you fall off a bike, you can sit there forever, but you're not going to get to where you want to go. So you've got to pick yourself up, clean yourself up, get stronger and keep going, whether that's personally or professionally. And I have had some falters professionally where I've fallen and I failed and ideas that, you know, I think, when you're younger, you have these ideals of how things will work and it looks perfect on paper, but you get into the real world and you just realize that's not really what I want. And sometimes I think as we get older and we have kids, which is something, you know, we've had the fortune of being able to have, be moms and work and have careers, but we understand the importance of wanting to schedule around them, mm-hmm. but also make the income that we want. And there's not a lot of options for that. I think that you know, throughout my career, I've learned professionally and personally, perseverance is huge. I was going to say, <laughs> I think that for like a, a word that I think would really describe you is resilience, because when you say I got knocked down, most <laughs> people have no concept of what that kind of knockdown looks like that mm-hmm. you've gone through. Yeah. Yeah. But you chose to come out of it. Maybe talk about that, because I think that that's something that you could teach a lot of people. Well, it's interesting because I don't tell my story a lot, and I'm not going to do it today. You know it intimately. But here's the reason why I think as women, we so want to compare ourselves to each other and say, what she went through is worse than me, or what she went through, or, you know, I think that we go through life, and yes, I have certain things written on my forehead that I've gone through. But there's a lot that people don't know about my life. And then sometimes I think those are the hardest things. You don't know if someone's struggling with being single or being divorced or having being in a marriage or not being able to be in the job that they want or if they're supporting their family or if they've lost a loved one. I mean, I think in this last year, we've all learned, you know, you have to pull it together and move forward. And if you don't, you're just going to be stuck. And I think that for me, I've had so many times that that's happened in my life that I just weigh the scales differently. When I look at what I'm going through, I just think, well, it could be worse. (laughs) And for me, you know, I have had times where it has, the way I look at it is if it's not life or death, it's okay, we'll get through it. We'll just, you know, it may not be perfect, but you just, you keep going. And um, yeah, you have to persevere because the other option is you're just going to fall over to the side. And as a mom, I don't want my kids to see that. My kids know when I'm struggling. They know when I'm having a rough day. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I think that in my imperfection, I'm teaching and leading them how to have big goals because if they have big goals and they fail, they're still closer than, you know, not doing anything at all. And I think that fear just, I think it, it paralyzes us and you just have to have movement. You know, just move forward. Even if you take one step forward and two steps back, it's still movement. And, you know, I think that's what resilience is. It's just making the decision to just move forward. And all of us are capable. It doesn't matter if you had a bad mom, a good mom, role models, bad education. I don't think anything matters. It's a decision in your head. You look at women who've succeeded in life and they've created these amazing masterpieces with their life. And it's honestly just because they made a decision that they were going to make a difference and they were going to do something. And what's interesting to me is most of the time, it's usually because they've done that because of someone in their life, like a child. Mm -hmm. And if I look at my life and all of the times that I've persevered when it mattered the most, it was because I was doing it for someone else. And as I've grown older, I've realized that I'm worth it. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm worth the changes. I'm worth, you know, doing all of this. So... Yeah, I think as your listeners, they're young and they're, even if they're older, you're never too old to make a change. Never, never too old. You said something to me once that I'm probably not going to say perfectly, um, but you said it's okay to be shattered because (laughs) when you put yourself back together, you'll be even more beautiful. There might be 
some harsher edges there mm-hmm. that only someone as close to you as I will see. <laughs> yes. But you'll be more beautiful. So yeah. I think it's a really, um, it was a really perfect for me at the time description of a way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I say that all the time. Um, I say if I look at my life, it's a mosaic. I'm a mosaic. Mm-hmm. And if you look at some of the most beautiful mosaics in the world, they look so beautiful from afar. But you get closer and you realize there's big spaces in between and they're jagged and it's dirty and it's messed up. And for my life, it wasn't a shattering one time. It was, I think what's the hardest thing for people is you go through something in life and you're shattered. And then you go through the work of putting yourself back together. And then to get shattered again, I almost, I mean, I still remember some moments in my life with you. (laughs) And I remember just looking at you going, just take me out of my misery. I can't do this. And, um, but at that moment, it's a choice to build again and to put it back together. As hard as it is, it's worth it. And I think that as I've looked at the times in my life where I have put my self back together again. You know, I won't lie. Sometimes I'm thinking, okay, when's it, when's it going to shatter again? But, you know, it's a process of just continuing to rebuild and Mm -hmm. it is so beautiful. And, you know, if you allow yourself to do that, you don't realize how beautiful you are to everybody else that's out there. And you don't realize that people are watching and that you're encouraging someone else through your story and through your life. I mean, that's probably one of my favorite things is when, you know, I don't like speaking. (laughs) but I have done it. I've, I've been talked into it a couple of times and I usually like to hide in the back and not go and talk to people because it's very raw to tell your story, mm-hmm. you know, unedited. And, um, but it's always amazing to me how many other women are going through the same thing and they just need someone else to say, I've been there. Right. Let me be a lighthouse to you because that's, if we, and I think as we've gotten older, if we can't be that to the younger women, then what good are we? Like, we want to be that for our girls and for our boys and for all the women that are out there to know that it's okay to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. But what matters is what you do when it happens. Yeah. So So let me ask you a couple of the questions that I ask all my guests. So you achieved six figures very early in your life. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that was like? Yes. So I remember because it was a very clear-cut goal. Um, you know, I, I decided, well, it was funny. I was making, um, so like I said, my first job was right out of college. It was for a publishing company, um, loved Mindy. So she <laughs> just taught me so much, such an amazing mentor. And, um, I remember she started teaching me about money and what do you want? How do you get there? And, mm-hmm. and just having this vision of your life. And I, it was really the first time that I sat down I was in my young twenties and I just thought, okay, we're talking about being a millionaire and having, you know, millions of dollars in your retirement. And what does that look like? And painting a picture of what you want your life to look like mm-hmm. instead of, you know, this is just what happened to me. And so, and that's what her publishing company was all about, doing that for the youth. And so I got to work with teachers all over and, and, and do that. It was so rewarding. But to sit back and look at your own life and think, well, what do I want this next season to look like? And you're never too old to do that. You're never too old. And so I thought, I want to make six figures. I, that's what I want to do. And so, yeah, I accomplished it in my 20s. And um, again, when things happen and you get knocked off, you know, I could have just said, eh, I accomplished it, I'm done. But I didn't. I made bigger goals. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's all in your perspective and what you want. But it was it felt pretty amazing. It felt really good just to say that was my goal and I want it. And to, to think about, well, what else can I accomplish? Mm-hmm. Book or podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um, I knew you were going to ask me that. So the funny thing is, well, your podcast is my favorite. Well, of course. <laughs> Um, so I love books and I'm very old school. I I don't like audio. She has book subscriptions, (laughs) plural, not like one. (laughs) Yeah, plural. I have book. Yeah. And the funny thing is my kids are the exact same way and we don't like electronic books. I like physical books that I can hold and I have a pen in my hand and I can highlight them. What is the name of the one subscription that you were telling me? 
For the moms out oh, there. Oh, for the moms out there. Yeah. So I we have so many books, but Literati is what we've been doing, which has yeah. been so fun because they curate them. And you can actually read them and then send them back. Well, check them out, see if you like them, and then send them back. But we keep them. Um, we keep yeah. every pack. It's so good. Yeah. I am like the queen of subscription, mail order, all that stuff. I'm about saving yes, time. I know you yes. Are. But like box after box. <laughs> box, after after box. box. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but if you're looking for books, so right now I'm really, really interested in habits. So mm-hmm. I don't just have one book. I have probably five or six books um, that I'm reading at a time, but I'm just intrigued with this idea of habits. And as you know, I'm not a morning person, but the last few years, I know it's so funny how that happens. But yeah, so it's just um, over the last few years, you know, when you want something bad enough, you'll rearrange and you don't have to do everything all at once. I think that's the biggest um, I think that that doesn't serve us so well to think that you have to just wake up and change everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I just started adding little by little, like changing things, waking up a little bit earlier to do things. And so, yeah, but now I'm even looking at, I mean, if I look now at what I'm doing in the mornings versus what I did two, three years ago, it's completely different. And so, Mm -hmm. but again, it's those small little changes that you make, you just, you get stronger and you get better and then you can continue to make more. And before you know it, you're off on a new path and it's, it's pretty amazing. But yeah, so books right now, all about habits, um, mindset, so important. So oh. I have to say thank you to our listeners because I get a lot of um, feedback on the podcast. And one of them suggested that I start asking my guests mm-hmm. what your best parenting tip is. And it's something mm. I had not been asking. So what <laughs> is your best parenting tip? That's a really my sweet friend. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, so I would say my best parenting tip, and I love parenting, by the way. I, I think it's so fun. Um, my best parenting tip is when something goes wrong, because we're talking right now about things going wrong in your life, in your career, personally. Well, guess what? Little people are watching, right? And even mm-hmm. big people. And so my biggest parenting tip is when something goes wrong, pause and then react in a way that you would want to be reacted to. So for example, Mm -hmm. you know, my kids will drop things. I mean, I got lots of kids and there's always, they're dropping something, there's something happening, there's something breaking. It's just always the way it goes. And you know, how we react and how we respond to them, we're teaching them how mistakes are going to shape them. And if they drop something or they break something or they do something wrong, you know, we'll just say, oh, it's only water. Oh, it's only milk. Oh, it's only paint. (laughs) Don't worry, it'll come out. Um, Oh, that was only my favorite, you know, whatever. Um, It's just something. It's not, you know, again, back to that perspective. Their spirit is more important. Their spirit is so much more important. And I think that as a parent, you know, we just react. I think that's what we do in life. We just react. But if we just pause, you know, they're looking at our response and they're waiting to see, you know, think about it when you have those toddlers. I remember when my kids were really little and, you know, they dropped flour all over the floor and I just picked it up and threw it at them. And, you know, we had a flower fight, you know, and it's just, Mm -hmm. it's silly, but you're teaching them it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You know, life's going to go on. We'll just clean it up. We'll just move forward. And it also teaches them that it's okay to try and fail, which I think is so hard, especially as an entrepreneur. You see people and they just, they quit before they even start because they they give up on themselves. And so, yeah. So what have I asked, what have I not asked you? And let me, I'm going to guide you. (laughs) Because you know what you want to ask, you (laughs) cheater. (laughs) One of the things that I have watched you do over the years is, um, I guess you would probably call it being your own hero and con- taking control mentally of what you say to yourself mm-hmm. and how that plays out. So will will you talk about building that strength? Because it's something that I have watched you really excel in, especially mm-hmm. over the last, I would say, five years. 
Yeah, no, it's so funny because so often people say, well, who's your hero? Who's your hero? Who do you look up to? Who, You know, I certainly have role models in my life. Um, and actually, I remember I was looking at different people and I was like, I should have a role model. And I was looking at the Hoyts, Team Hoyt. I don't know if you know them, but it's a father's son and he used to push his son oh, through yes. the triathlons. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah, the one that makes you ball yes, every time yes, you yes, watch yes. it. Yes. And so, and I just kept thinking, I should have a hero. I should have a hero. And I just, I, I didn't have a hero. And so... I was thinking about it and I just thought, I want to be my own hero, like who I want to become. Because, you know, if you have a hero, then you're always trying to emulate that person. You're trying to be like them. And again, it's that comparison. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, I want to be like, I want to be my own hero, who I'm going to be in five years, who I'm going to be in 10 years. And it kind of started in high school. I had a teacher who had us write letters to ourselves. And so throughout my life, we've written, I've written letters to myself and, you know, hey, this is what I'm hoping you can accomplish. This is what I want you to do. And, you know, it's so fun because then you're accountable to yourself. And I think that especially if you listen to women who are successful, They've taken ownership of their lives and their decisions and what they want. And again, it doesn't matter your background. It's all about, you know, you deciding. And a big part of that is then what are you feeding yourself? You know, for me, um, I have had to piece myself together quite a few times and you can't rely on someone else. And so being my own hero and taking responsibility so that when I get to that next, you know, pit stop in my life, I can say, oh, good job, Michelle. Like, thank you for doing that. I know it sounds really, really crazy, but it does. It makes, you know, like I look back at my life and I'm so proud of how I've handled things. I haven't done everything perfectly, but it encourages me to move forward in a way that I'm Michelle in five years is going to be proud thankful of. for and proud of. Yeah. And there's changes mm -hmm. that I can make. And, um, you know, like the biggest thing is self-talk. You know, I think that we don't realize how strong our minds are. Our minds are so ridiculously strong. And what we feed it is what's going to come out, not only with our kids, but with ourselves, you know. And I think mm -hmm. in the last, you know, probably three or four years, I've really focused. I've, I've um, put a stake in the ground as to where, what I want to accomplish in my goals. Kind of like when you asked me, like, well, do you remember when you did that first, you know, six figures? Yes. And um, to, so to put stakes in the ground and say, this is what I want, but then you have to feed your mind to get you there. So, you know, I have goofy little things written on my mirror, on my watch. My favorite thing right now is I have a picture that says, be obsessed with your potential. And I love that. Be obsessed with what you can create. You can be anything. And it's not that I'm just going to will. I'm going to work for it. I'm mm -hmm. going to tell myself I can do it, and I'm going to do it. You have them everywhere. You have things <laughs> on your mirror. I you do. have things oh, on your computer, yes, on your I desk, do. on your kids' boards. <laughs> I did. Actually, my kids today said, oh, I saw your note. You left me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's a reminder. And, you know, um, it's so interesting because, you know, this last year with COVID and everything, it was hard. Everyone had different struggles. I'm very thankful that I didn't have some of the struggles. For me, it was a struggle, but a, a growth year, which is I'm so thankful for. But it was so interesting because I was so exhausted um, mm -hmm. from everything. And um, I actually would look at some of my old Facebook posts and I would hit some key things that have happened in my life and the memories would come up. And I'm talking harsh things where those were some of those shattering moments. But to read my own own words of how I was perceiving that day three, four, or five years ago, and then to read my own words mm -hmm. on a day where I felt so empty, I couldn't even, I couldn't even describe what I was feeling. It's just that emptiness. Your own words, they just, they feel the depths of your soul because no one knows you like you know yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, like be your own best friend, be, you know, be responsible for, you know, for your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I love you, but you're not responsible <laughs> for my I'm life. Not. No, you're not. You didn't know that? You didn't get that memo? So, but, you know, and it's also teaching the kids that that's, you know, it's just small little things, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it's, it's yeah. So does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Anything you want to wrap up with? No, you, you know me inside and out. Anything <laughs> else you want to, you want me to no. talk about? I want to say thank you for doing this with me. Yeah. And thank you for being the amazing aunt that you are to my children. You're welcome. Yeah. And I, you know, I just, I want to just say to all of your listeners, you know, if you've st stuck around this long, I hope you got a little gem. I think that it's really inspiring that you're taking the time to teach other people lessons, because I think that when we can do that, when we can teach each other what we've done, what we've failed, how we can move forward together, 
I think you're just raising a whole new group of women that are going to be able to work together and achieve anything they want. So thank you for putting this all together. And Thank you. It's been fun for me to see some of the vulnerabilities that women will share on this and allow other women to learn from it. So I love you. I love you too. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.